prednisolone, and then it's also given by injection uh, with the agent called dexamethasone. Now, let's look at how anti-inflammatories work. We said that they suppress the inflammatory mediators, and the main one they target is the prostaglandins, or leukotrienes. Last week you saw the cascade reaction of the inflammatory mediators that are released, and you will see that prostaglandins and leukotrienes are just one of the inflammatory mediators, so the anti-inflammatories suppress the synthesis of these mediators, so they mustn't be synthesized. And this, again, this treatment is mainstay in acute asthma. So in acute asthma, we give immediately an anti-inflammatory because we know it's the mucus that's blocking the airways and the mucus is due to the inflammation. So the route of administration, we said the oral route is used when we want to suppress an attack or when the asthma is uncontrolled or unstable, you'll find how weather changes. Many asthma patients that are prone to become very yes, sensitive to external stimuli. And the peak season for asthma in Cape Town is around uh, May, April, May, because it's seasonal change, and also in September when there's a high pollen count. Okay. So let's look at the uses of the corticosteroids, the oral ones, especially early in acute asthma. And this happens when bronchodilators fail to respond, we have to give an anti-inflammatory and also in the treatment of chronic asthma. So what usually happens in the public sector if a patient is a chronic asthmatic patient and more or less can monitor their symptoms and they know if the weather patterns are changing, then the doctors usually prescribe a five-day course of prednisone so that it's used as preventive therapy. So the patient can then take the treatment when they feel okay the chest is feeling a bit tight, so they prepare themselves before the onset of an acute attack. Because as you know, an acute attack is life threatening. Okay, it's a matter of minutes, and one has to get emergency treatment as soon as possible. Uh, now with corticosteroids, there's a plethora of side effects. It starts off with hyperglycemia, especially if one is taking it as chronic treatment. That's why we only give prednisone for five days. Because if you give it long term, the symptoms like hyperglycemia, thinning of the skin, you know, some patients develop the moon face, uh, they start retaining water, uh, adi adi development of adipose tissue, uh, fractures. So there's a whole host of symptoms, and one doesn't want to uh, predispose asthma patients to those symptoms. So we always treat aggressively, but treat for a short period of time. Right? Sorry, can I take it back a little bit? Yes, usually, if, yeah, if they can't swallow, then we give it IV or IV. Hmm. Yes, no, no. We give it if it's not so severe, not very severe. If they can, uh, if they can feel that things are not feeling right. But that's a good point, yes. They won't be able to take it orally. Or via nebulizer, mm -hmm. nebulizer. Yeah. Okay, so... Again, IV hydrocortisone for those who are unable to swallow, and nebulizers, right? And then long-acting uh, corticosteroids, but it's not used that much now in uh, asthma. We just stick to the IV, prednisone, IV um, hydrocortisone, 
and then we change to oral because of the side effects that I mentioned earlier. Right, now with the inhaler, the one problem is when the patients depress the canister, the plume, the drug that is emitted gets stuck onto the throat, which is the oropharynx, and then there's a buildup of fungal infection, right? You can see in the diagram there that white patch. And that can become very uncomfortable that you have to give an antifungal, but you can advise your patients that when they're using the anti-inflammatory pump, they can drink a cup of tea, or drink a glass of water, so that you don't get the drug sitting on the throat. Or they can gargle with salt water. You want to avoid the accumulation of the drug at the throat. Now, severe acute asthma, this is really your emergency situation. It's life-threatening. You want to get your patient as soon as possible to the emergency unit. And again, this is a case where no matter how many puffs of the bronchodilator one is able to inhale, the patient cannot take it because there's such a buildup of mucus, the air passages are blocked. Basically, you're going to see your patient heaving for breath. You see these neck muscles are extended. The patient is really helpless. And that's where we start the nebulizers. The IV has, has, to, has to be initiated. And that is largely due to the fact that one does not uh, 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 determine or assess the severity of the symptoms early enough to treat it with all the corticosteroids. And sometimes the acute attack happens so suddenly that the patient might be well for the entire day, but it just needs exposure to one allergen and then that patient is, requires emergency care due to the acute symptoms. And sometimes you'll find that patients delay or uh, appropriate treatment is delayed. That's another reason for patients ending up in the ICU or emergency care. And also inappropriate treatment. You find that patients don't like carrying the bronchodilators around or the anti-inflammatories because now they've got two pumps. It becomes very cumbersome to carry. So they carry only the bronchodilator and they leave the anti-inflammatory at all. And that's the one you need now, especially with what changes are happening weather-wise. So always advise your patients to carry both the pumps, especially those who have chronic asthma. You don't want them to end up in the emergency unit. The one thing we don't give to a patient who's suffering from severe asthma is a sedative. As much as you're seeing them finding it difficult to breathe, sedatives are contraindicated. No sedatives for a patient who's in, uh, experiencing an acute attack. Right, so how do we manage a patient with severe, with severe acute asthma? So oxygen, firstly, we want to make sure that the patient receives oxygen. And that is given by a face mask and then your beta <coughs> stimulant via a nebulizer or large volume spatial, but usually it's the nebulizer that's given, and then sustaining steroids via injection, IV, okay? That's corticosteroid, but if you've got both salbutamol and a steroid being administered, again, we have to monitor something, and that's called the potassium level because you'll find that the side effects of corticosteroid and the side effect of salbutamol is lowering of the potassium levels. So we need to give potassium supplement to maintain stability. If no improvement with those two agents, then we add on another agent, which is called theophylline. But again, because of its side effects, which we saw last week, we try not to use it, but if need be, patient is not responding fast enough, then we add the tail. But we have to be cautious about the tachycardia, you know what tachycardia is, mm -hmm. right? And the convulsions. Right, 
Then, as final resort, we have to add in a combination preparation, and that we spoke about last week. It's the anti-masculinic agent, together with a beta-2 agonist, and then phenotyl and a budesonide. So that's the combinations that can be added. Now, chronic asthma, you will be treating patients with chronic asthma in your clinic, at your practice, you've probably seen them now uh, as you go to your clinic visits. Treatment again, bronchodilators mainly, but we add on if there's no improvement. So we know that inhaler therapy is standard therapy, and it's uh, important that we use a beta-2 agonist, usually short-acting if it's mild asthma, but if it's chronic asthma, we can use a long-acting bronchodilator, such as salmeterol, okay? And the advantage here is it causes the bronchodilation, so it dilates the bronchi and also stabilizes the mast cells to prevent the release of immunoglobulin E. But we do not use salmeterol in an acute attack because it has a slow onset of action. It takes a while before it starts. So you want something that wants to work fast to cause immediate relief uh, in acute asthma. This agent, salmeterol, is not the best. So another agent that we can use is a leukotriene receptor agonist. Remember leukotrienes are also inflammatory mediators. So if we prevent the leukotrienes from attaching to the receptor site of the agonist, it is good as part of prophylactic treatment, especially for allergic asthma. And then we spoke about combination, salbutamol and theophylline, if we need an